Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Open House. Good morning, everybody. Can I please have a quick sound check before we get started? Type a one in the chat box if you can hear me, and also if you could see the uh, slide currently. All right. Good morning, everybody. We have a full house. We have over a thousand people that have registered for the open house. I want to welcome everybody in. And before we get started, just want to share a few things on how we run things that trade out loud and what you can expect within uh, the last uh, three uh, days. All right. So glad to see everybody in here. Again, we have an open house. Uh, and it is going to be very interesting because uh, we have uh, so many people today in the room. Uh, before we get started, just want to point out just some very, uh, you know, quick things. Um, first of all, the risk disclaimer. So all information that we provide here at Trade Out Loud basically today is for it. Uh, educational purpose only it should not be construed as any investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities options futures or any instrument of any kind trading involves a really high level of risk i'm pretty sure you know that and you could lose money and before deciding to trade you should carefully consider your objective your risk tolerance your level of experience, your risk appetite, et cetera. So individual results depend upon each person's commitment, each person's uh, skills and effort. And results may not be typical. Individual results will vary. You must do your own research and you must take your own trading decisions. All right. Uh, so let's get started. All right. So before we get, uh, you know, right in the core of things, uh, and if you're very new to Trade Out Loud, my name is Anka Metcalf. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLaw.com, which is a trading education company that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and invest in the market. I have been a professional trader for more than 20 years. So 20 years, I gave up my job and I said, you know what, I'm going to do this, but not before I was aware of the risk. I was aware of that I needed to be educated into a field that you're jumping into because a lot of times traders have uh you know uh, they don't have realistic expectations so for that reason what what happens is that they dive into trading and see ah let's see how it is okay but later on they discover that they're losing their money so please be educated uh before you even open a trading account and i know that with the futures market and if you would speak to uh brokers <laughs> you would see that uh, uh small accounts are the ones that are getting wiped out constantly so uh make sure that you know you apply your due diligence you apply your knowledge uh before you open obviously a trading account so get educated um i run uh two programs uh, besides the education that i provide for day trading for swing trading for investing um i also run two services uh, one service is the Stock Swing Trader. That is the oldest service. Trade Outlaw has been allowed since 2010. And I have collaborated with the client since 2008. And basically when everything started with the financial uh, meltdown here in the U.S. Uh, and I have been doing it pro bono for a couple of years. And then I decided that my time is so valuable. I need to charge for it obviously so i run a swing the swing trading service since 2010 is one of the most successful uh programs that we have out there we have people in that program since 2010 believe it or not so 14 years that have been with me uh and the newest edition was in 2017 and that is for um futures and i run a futures trading room the futures trading room is focused only on trading the power hour and that is the just a couple just i would say a couple hours every single day so we meet here at nine o'clock i usually get on the mic very close to 9 30 and then uh we start uh looking for some setups we start looking for some trades and uh we're pretty much done into 11 o'clock 
at the latest. Sometimes, yes, the market is active or sometimes you may not get the setups that you're expecting in the morning. So therefore you have to wait a little bit longer. But I would say uh, those are rare cases where we keep the trading room open all day or we keep the trading room open till one o'clock or 2 p.m. Um, I specialize in high velocity moves. So what you are going to see today is that I established some levels and I'm waiting for some setups. And these setups that occur, they're not gonna be um, targeting like very small returns. They're gonna be targeting wider returns. Um, I'm the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system. And the reason why I'm saying I'm the designer of the um, uh, method is because I cannot take credit for technical analysis. Technical analysis has been around for a very long time. However, I have added some elements to my analysis that help me with intraday trading decisions. And not only that, but help me with for my swing trades, help me analyze much better my investment opportunities. Uh, my method is based on price support resistance, but uh, 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 it's much more than meets the eye. I'm not focused only on supply and demand because that only represents like a tenth of the method that I'm applying. So traders that use only base their decisions on support resistance, supply and demand are the traders that are failing because what is support? Support is the last level at which the price action can react. And if it's not reacting, it's going to um, it's going to collapse. So that means that traders that base their decisions, oh, I'm going to buy on support, okay? And they're buying on support without any technical setup. Guess what? They're subject to 90% failure because those setups clearly don't work. If price needs to uh, revisit support or trade down support, more than likely that support is going to get breached. Uh, I focus on different kind of support. I focus on minor support and um, minor resistance, which are dominant only and present only in uptrends, massive uptrends and massive uh, downtrends. So it's very easy to nail a trade to the upside or to the downside. I have specific trigger times. You guys are going to see that I'm going to name some timings here because I don't waste my time and I don't waste my money. And if I don't see it set up, you guys, I'm not going to be taking the trade because I'm not risking my money if I don't see a proper setup. I love money so much that I'm protecting my money a lot. I also uh, pay attention to specific price zones. There are four sp specific price zones that we teach in our classes, and we teach our traders that around those levels, uh, traders should have a cautionary uh, 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 I would say there should be super, super caution around those zones because these are scale in or scale out zones for institutional traders. I also uh, I also pay attention and you guys are going to see me in action in just a few moments when we look at charts. I, uh, I look at chart synchronicity and divergency. So what this means is that I look for relative strength and relative weakness in comparison to the rest of the major indices. Um, and I teach definitely traders how to generate income. You guys have access to my portfolio. It is online. If you want to see it, you could go to our website and you could go under the service uh, tab and you could tap into the trade out loud and therefore you can access the portfolio and all the results that you guys see there. They are based only on the power hour trading. So that's pretty much it. I don't trade the rest of the day. I have, uh, I have uh, collaborated and I have been seen on a plethora and they're not even here, like all the media outlets, they're not even here. So uh, starting with uh, CNBC, Money Show, Benzinga, uh, Stocks and Commodities Magazine, Yahoo Finance, and so on. Uh, in 2021, we won the FinTech Award. So what that means, we uh, have been awarded um, uh, the best Price we have number one for best financial literacy tool. You could see it right here. So we went literally Market Watch. Uh, we were up against Market Watch and some other uh, categories. And not only that, but just going. Uh, this is a small ad where you could see that they uh, provided us their uh, award for best financial literacy tool. So what that means. Uh, for our courses, for our wealth courses, for our trading room, for uh, our income um, strategies, uh, and uh, basically all our products and all our services. Some rules. 
today it's going to be again about rules because if you're here okay we have to be very patient that's one of the rules be very patient uh one of the rules is that i don't take any questions in the first hour write them down you know you can post it in the room and i will scroll after an hour and or basically after we're out of the trades because if we're going to be in trades for an hour and a half, I'm not going to take questions for an hour and a half if the environment is really super, super busy. So uh, I will take your question. So I will answer every single trader's question today in the room. So I will take time to take the questions at the end. But while I'm trading, I'm trading because I'm here to make money. And I'm pretty sure you guys are here too, to make money. We will allocate plenty of time at the end of the session for Q&A. Now, small accounts. A small account is considered anything below $50,000. So small accounts can participate in any trade only by position sizing. If you don't understand the concept of position sizing, uh, type a one at the chat box right now, and I will uh, make time tomorrow to educate you a little bit on that one. Without position sizing, you're not going to get ahead, and you're not going to make money or going to blow up your accounts 100% of the time. Uh, we teach this in our courses, but I could take like a very brief second to explain to you guys what that is, because that is the holy grail of trading. You could be literally, and I'm quoting, let me see if I get it right. Uh, I don't want, okay, so I'm not going to quote anybody here, but uh, I, I'm not sure if Peter, Lin Peter Lynch said it or somebody else. <clears throat> but he said that you could be a complete imbecile and if you win uh, and if you have the proper position sizing, you could actually make money by being right only 40% of the time. Until then, you could be a complete imbecile. This is ex this is not exactly what he said, but I could give you the exact quote um, tomorrow. So, uh, But anyways, it was something like that. So yeah, so I could be totally stupid. <laughs> Okay, I could be right only 40% of the time and yet make money. And that's one of the reasons why I started making money immediately right after I received my trading education more than 23 years ago. Uh, position sizing is key and mandatory for consistency in trading. And uh, for futures traders, uh, I do recommend to, uh, for you guys to risk 1% until we get into more details, 1% of your account. Uh, per trade and limit yourself to three to four trades every single day. That is the key to consistency. Depending on price, actually, we will trail the entire position or scale and take partial profit throughout. You guys are going to hear my instructions and I'm going to tell you exactly what you can do and I can tell you what I am going to do. And you can take a decision and say, hey, I'm going to go for option A or I'm going to go for option B. Uh, everything is going to be done live online. I'm going to be holding your hands through the trades by telling you exactly what I'm doing and what you can do to protect your money. Uh, here is an example of how we're going to be calling the trades. First of all, I'm going to, uh, we're going to be trading the, um, we're going to be trading the majors. So we're going to focus on NASDAQ, S&P and Dow. And depending on their price action and how they're uh, trading, um, we will be deciding on one or two or all of them. You don't have to take all the trades. You just take the trades that meet your trading plan. So the first uh, thing that I'm going to post in the trading room, you guys are going to hear it on the mic as well, is going to be the symbol. So whether we're going to trade the Dow, the S&P or NASDAQ. The second thing that I'm going to say is long or short, and you're going to see it, uh, I'm going to be on the mic and I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing and what I'm looking at. And then I'm going to type the parameters, like NASDAQ L for long or S for short. And I'm going to post the parameters, typically the last three digits of the uh, of the price. So you're going to see probably, let's say NASDAQ 953, like I have it over here by 905. And that by, by that X is going to be where you need to place your stop. So it's going to be 953. Let's say we're long 953. And then we put our stop below 905. So this is exactly that X. So that's what it means. Um, and uh, so it's simple direction, price entry, stop price. And then guys, you're not going to be left alone. I'm here. And um. I'm going to be trailing my own position and I'm going to do it out loud. Uh, traders that are using micros, keep in mind that micros are to the size, the full size contract. You guys already know that. But what you probably don't know is that they're also 10 times more volatile than the full size contract. I don't trade micros. I take, trade full size. However, you could take the trades using micros, but you need to add at least 
two to five points above or two to five points below for the entry price. So for example, if I'm going to call, let's say NASDAQ, and if NASDAQ is called at 953, you're gonna take the trade, you're gonna add, uh, depending on the level of volatility, you could actually add five points to be on the safe side. So you're actually gonna say, I'm gonna take it at 958. Okay, and that is because of the volatility. Other than that, if you take it at the exact price, I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna get triggered. You're gonna get triggered, and you're gonna be in the trade all along. So I'm not gonna be responsible for your uh, management because it is ten times more volatile, and you need to add more points to the price, uh, to the entry price. Um, okay, so what to expect? All right, we're getting super close to the open, and this is, I think, this is the last slide. So this is what you're gonna expect. I'm gonna go right ahead after this little presentation here, a little intro, and I'm going to do the game plan. So I'm going to go over the major indices. I'm going to go over gold oil, maybe bonds. We're going to see what we're going to, we have. We're going to analyze the current market context to see what we're up against, where our major levels are, what our trend is. That is the most important thing. You know the trend, you know that, you know which direction you're going to be taking the trade because we're going to trade dominance. Um, we're going to evaluate news and impact on the power hour. Let's see if we have any news that is coming out. Uh, we are going to go through uh, earnings and potential impact onto the market. We're going to be identifying trading opportunities. We're going to be identifying high odds trades, waiting for the trade. So we're not going to say like, oh my God, let's get in. No, the, you're going to find out about the trade probably five to three minutes before or two minutes before the trade even, uh, even triggers. So you have plenty of time. There's no excuses like, oh my God, I missed the trade. I missed this. You don't have to trade your real account while you're trading with me. In fact, everybody that joins the Trade Out Loud room is uh, advised to trade a couple of weeks or a week at least, depending on how fast you are, how fast you pick up things, uh, to get accustomed to my style of trading and to see how I call the trades and to get a little bit used to it. Uh, we will try to identify um, the trades, like I said, two to five minutes before the trigger. We're going to determine the parameters for the trade. Position sizing is so important. Why? Because I don't establish the stop. The chart and the pattern establishes the chart. If you modify your uh, stop, depending on the parameters that you have, it's all you. It's up to you. I have nothing to do with it. You are modifying your trade. It's not my trade. Now it's your trade. You take care of it. And then at the end, we're going to do a recap of the session. Okay. Uh, the ugliest thing this week is that we are trading in an option expiration week. So on Friday, we have option expiration. And no, 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 no. The futures are not expiring, but everything else under the sun is expiring. So stocks are expiring. And that's going to produce massive volatility. The price is, you're going to expect violent, uh, violent uh, price action. Uh, stocks will be much wider unpredictability of price direction you're going to experience within this week a move up big move up big move down and a whole lot of sideways action and i have a chart here that shows you that for all about three sessions we were sideways we got the big move to the upside total retracement so a big move up big move down and then sideways again and it's not coming in that particular order you could have we could totally be up right now tomorrow we can be down and then sideways towards the end of the week or we could go bullish into the end of the week or most common that i have and you know the things that i have noticed a whole lot within option expiration is that mostly the selling is happening towards friday or on friday uh, so price may not be true to technical. So if you're experiencing, if you're a new trader and if you're experiencing um, stop outs more than often, you know, if you're experiencing that price action is not, you know, working, you know, how you analyzed it, it's because the price action is not true to technical, it's true value. And you're going to get a lot of uh, a lot of choppiness. All right, so today is August 13th. This morning we had the PPI numbers coming out. And if you scroll up, it has been a tradition here in the trading room that we focus on um, the PPI numbers and the CPI numbers. And we're pretty much done in probably a few seconds, <laughs> uh, just like today. I will uh, I will be sharing with you. Um, uh, I will be sharing you some stuff uh, <laughs> later on and uh, how I traded 
and the results that I got, like, seriously, I'm, I'm done, like, seriously, for, for the day. But yeah, I'm going to continue to trade today just because it's an open house. Uh, and then tomorrow, I expect the same thing, uh, core PPI numbers. And this is for trade LL members alone because they know exactly how to do this. So I'm going to open, again, the room earlier. If you want to come in, I'm not coming on the mic. This is not something for entertainment. OK, so this is something that I'm there with my computer, with my mouse, with my it's just me in the zone and I'm just typing in the room. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, uh, by the way, today uh, we don't have any other releases. You guys can see 830 and this is what's, what's it. The market is going to run on uh, run on the current uh, momentum that it's in. We had Home Depot report this morning. So this is going to affect the Dow. So we're going to pay attention to this. Uh, and my goal is to provide you with a framework of how I have been trading successfully for over 20 plus years. This is my performance portfolio year to date. Um, I have a $500,000 account. This, these are just returns on my, um, by the way, these are just on my longs. You could see very, very, uh, I haven't shorted a lot, but th this is the return on my shorting. These are my commissions right here. So I put them all together. Uh, so I have doubled my account in seven months, doubled my account in seven months. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to be sharing uh, the uh, screen that we're going to be uh, focusing on right now. And I am go so for you guys to see everything here. Okay. Do you guys see the screen? You guys see the screen. Okay. You guys see the charts? Type of one at the chat box if you can see the charts. That's great. All right. All right. So you, in order for you guys to see the screen, I am going to take the camera out of your way. All right. And we're going to get started with the analysis. We still have about six minutes left. So that's pretty good. All right. All right, so uh, first of all, NASDAQ is up 195 points. The S&P is up 34. Uh, YM is up 71, and we're having a nice momentum in Russell uh, up 16 points. So with that means that uh, we are 1% up in NASDAQ and over, uh, yeah, and the rest of the indices are, uh, well, you're going to see very moderate, very moderate acceleration in the Dow. So this one is a little bit weaker. We're going to take a look at Home Depot uh, later on to see um, how it's trading because that may impact as well and the, definitely the Dow stocks. Uh, the S&P relative uh, strength with RTY, so the strongest index is NASDAQ, so therefore we're going to be focusing a little bit more on NASDAQ, but we're going to have to wait and see at the open uh, how the price action is going to behave. And now we're going to take it down to our analysis. I'm going to share a different screen. And here we go. We're going to start with NASDAQ being the strongest one. We had a massive base going on for about two days. This is the first day where we have started to accelerate a little bit higher. We had a bullish above level today in um and NASDAQ, I'm just going to post it right here for you guys to see. And this, usually I do this about five minutes before the uh, numbers. Okay, so you, could, you guys could see that I called very early on. You can look in the chat box. Um, uh, we traded the PPI numbers. And uh, the only level that we had was NASDAQ long over 767. Okay, so you guys see it in the chat box. It was uh, 767. Um, and uh, we had a target of 800 in 820 and went to 825. Uh, so basically, we made 58 points in literally a, a split second. All right. And that's, you know, and for those of you that are very new to futures and you want to know, it's like, okay, how much is that? That is $1,160 per contract. Okay. All right, so now we're, you can see here that we're heading higher. We talked yesterday about the rotation off of the 50 SMA double bottom confirmation. We're still into a, a little bit of resistance from the prior uh, from the prior high here that we had in March. We're still up against the 20 SMA and the 10 EMA. We are into an open void all the way to 19,000. 
And if you could see here, uh, if we're going to start, you know, respecting this direction, we're going to see 19,000 and even more today. We're not that far away from that. Uh, so what that means is that we uh, should be expecting higher price action. We have uh, uh, massive support uh, into the 630 and we have minor support that it should be establishing into the 780. So these are the two areas that we're going to be focusing on. And then we have the emitting SMP uh, sideways. Uh, we have uh, continuation action and rotation, double bottom confirmation with a little bit of a lifted low here. Uh, just into the 5200 level. We do have a little bit of a hiccup here with the 10 EMA into the 5430. Uh, we are, we still, so we still have a little bit of room into the 30 area, but 30 area is going to be the line in the sand today. Let's see if we take it out, take out the 30 and then we have uh, room to about 45. These are the main levels and the main targets that we're going to go for. And of course, support is at the 70 currently. We have the Dow. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, see the Dow is actually still meandering within the same base, within the same zone. The catalyst for the Dow is going to come over 700. So if we see today 700, we're going to tackle it to the long side. We ha still have the um, 200 SMA that is declining and that is putting a little bit more selling pressure on price. We have not yet triggered the rotation onto the weekly. So therefore the velocity zone is still going to be above 770. So again, 700 would be uh, a level. It is a level that was tested yesterday and it was traded uh, also on Friday. So we need to get above 700 ASAP in the Dow in order to start the continuation and to be in sync with the rest of the indices. We have a nice space here uh, just because we have been super neutral within the last two and a half days. So we're going to be bullish above 750 and bearish below 340. And then we have RTY and RTY. I'm just going to rule it out today. It's not going to be the day when I'm even going to focus on RTY, but RTY is under a lot of resistance into the 2100 zone. So that means that it needs the not only 2100, but it needs 2110 to escape through the zone. You see the choppiness that we have on the 1H. It hasn't even rotated. So this one has relative weakness compared to the rest of the indices. Oil. Oil had a mega rally in yesterday's trading session, like on fire, basing right now, currently pulling back. Um, I, like I said, uh, it's back into the $80. I, what I do like about it is I would like to see it a little bit higher and then I would like to see it pull back a little bit. So maybe today is going to be the day that may be setting up for tomorrow. So today I'm not going to have any trades in oil. GC. Um, so you can see how I'm ruling out every single aspect of trading. And then currently I'm just going to be focusing on NASDAQ and maybe ES, maybe. All right. Uh, so gold, very strong. Um, it had a nice pullback to the 2500 zone. It rotated. It went back into the uh, 25, uh, 2510. And we're expecting the price action probably to go a little bit higher. We have a weekly sandwich here, which is conducive for higher price action, actually tackling the 22 and a half prior high. So if today's going to be a neutral day, that's fine. You, you could, we could stay balanced this way, but then tomorrow could be a bullish day if we tackle the highs. So this is pretty much what we're seeing into the market. And these are the basic levels. Uh, so uh, bottom line is that we're going to be bullish uh, right off the bat. Um, we're going to be super cautious. Our main indices that we're going to be focusing on are going to be NASDAQ NES. We're not going to rule out the Dow, but let's see what Home Depot is. Uh, yeah, Home Depot. What Home Depot did is... It went down at six o'clock in the morning and then at 630, 6.30, it rotated. Home Depot needs to get above $350 in order for the Dow, to, in order for the Dow to have some kind of uh, impact. All right, perfect. So this is what, and like I said, I will answer all the questions. It's just that I'm not gonna do it now because I wanna make some money now. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people in here that wanna make some money, but I will answer all the questions after the trading session is done and after we're out of trades. Maybe if we're out of trades in five minutes, I will start taking questions in five minutes. But like I said, it all depends on how the trading day is going to be. 
Okay, so first of all, we're going to be looking for some setups. Like I said, my favorites market is open. My favorites remain for the moment, NASDAQ and ES. The dominant trend is to the upside, not looking to short. Shorting is um, um, not in our trading plan today. And we're just watching now for a setup. So far, we're getting pretty good momentum. I'm looking at the risk levels here and displayed. I have five minute charts. I like to trade the five minute charts, especially after news. One minute charts are in two minute charts still have one minute left before uh, the bars before they close. NASDAQ shy of making new highs right now. Neutral price action in the Dow. Russell coming in, divergence. Uh, NASDAQ has room to go to, the first target is going to be 880. So it's in a rush to get there. We have about 10 seconds until the two-minute candles close. Two-minute candles solid in NASDAQ. Divergency, massive divergency in Russell NYM, which is going to pretty much put a dent into the ascension of NASDAQ, probably, and S&P. So we've got to be super careful. I'm not taking anything until I have my own setup. Current support and that we have to talk about in NASDAQ is going to be 816. The stops are going to be wide because we are trading in a very volatile environment. So far, the risk for the trader is going to be over 50 points. Why I'm coming back very soon. UNH is very strong, Microsoft strong, uh, McDonald's, Home Depot coming back in. Our focus is not stuck. Oh, wow. This is going to be a wild one. Okay, this is the first area of resistance that I've been telling you guys about, the 880 and NASDAQ. The risk level is so wide right now, over 70 points. Come back a little bit. I would like to see it into the 850 at least. This candle is going to close in about 40 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry, 15 seconds. If NASDAQ is going to start trading below 840, it's going to start pulling back a little bit. 
as long as it's not going to violate the 814 level, 815 level. Okay, this could be, it's not for everybody. I'm just telling you guys what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I like it over 890. So NASDAQ long, 890. And my stop is going to be 810. Do not take it unless you see the 890 print on your chart. And like I said, if the price action is going to start taking out the 40, we're going to be canceling that trade. And we're going to reassess it for a better entry. In fact, I would love that more. Let's see if we get a little sandwich here. The target that we're going to be focusing on is going to be 900, 920. Nine, nine, nine fifty with room to nineteen thousand. Currently, the trade is eight ninety by eight ten. Position size for that, depending on your account size, see how many contracts you could fit into your one percent. Parameters may change in terms of stop. We may be reducing the stop for the trade once the trigger is happening. So let's see. But for now, we may be having a new stop at 830, but not now. Or 840. Yeah, more like 840. Russell is having a comeback. Fifteen minute in uh, oil, not bad. It's not setting, it's trying to set up, but it's not ready yet. Uh, by the way, the S&P could also be bullish over 16 and a half or 17, 16 and a half or 17 and the stop under 5,400. So I'm just going to put that as well. With our first target into 5420 SMP. No changes in NASDAQ. And SMP has room to 5440. And also the frothy side is going to be 60, 5460. If it decides to move above the entry level, <clears throat> 20 is going to be, uh, I don't like the fact that it has resistance so close to the trigger at 20, but let's see. I like the trend. All the indices currently, not all, but so far the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ are in power trends. I'm loving NASDAQ's action. Loving it. In about 15 seconds, we could potentially have a new setup which means that we're going to have the same entry 
but a much better stop so we could take um, different size. Same with ES, ES new parameters. Cancel ES with the prior parameters, ES new parameters. New parameters, 16 by 06 in ES, same targets. NASDAQ, not yet established. Dowski moving higher. Russell recovering. YM and Russell catching up with S&P and NASDAQ. NASDAQ still up 1%, over 1%. NASDAQ remains the same with the same parameters. That's it, NASDAQ, just a little bit of a pullback here. NASDAQ danger zone is going to be 810. If below 810, it's going to start the pullback process, most likely to 760, not shorting it. Shorting, not an option. If ES is going to start taking out the 5406, we're going to be canceling the trade. Cancel NASDAQ. For now, ES is still on deck. Gold is extremely volatile. Oil not moving. S&P on deck with the last trade, 16 by 06. And my favorite here, NASDAQ. NASDAQ a little flaky in the sense of setting. I love it that it's above the 10 EMA. Yeah, we still need to get it over 890. There's no other entry for it. And you can see here that it's meandering between the five minute high low, right? So we're still going to have to stop here at 888, eight, eight, just a little bit below this. Let's say 814, 8. Let's put it 810 the way it was. Nothing has changed in NASDAQ. NASDAQ super wide. SP order in at 
like I said, same targets. We're going to be looking for 54.20. That's the first uh, inflection area. Order filled in SMP. Currently, NASDAQ is at 887. Richard, what order is ES? Order filled. Mean, I am in the trade at 54.16. My stop, 54.06. I am one takeaway from target one. Target one is kind of complicated here because it comes with a lot of resistance. If you want to take partial profits, you can take partial profits. I'm not. Bam! Slash through the 20. Let's go. Let's go. The more we extend, we need to see like a 23 at least. 54-23. We have uh, NASDAQ that has, order has been filled in NASDAQ. NASDAQ is active. Full trades are active. I am in both trades. First target in NASDAQ is 900. If you want to peel some out at 900, that's good. We cannot put the stop at a break even just yet. We don't have... The price action extended as much, and we have to respect these first resistance zones. Unfortunately, they came very close to the trigger, so. We trade with what we have. The second target that we're going to be looking in NASDAQ is going to be 920. Four points away. Wow, Dowski. Look at it go. Catching up with NASDAQ. And you can see here NASDAQ SP pausing while YM is catching up with price in for SP and for NASDAQ. Apple is higher, Microsoft, Amazon is up against a big mass of resistance into the 169. Tesla, higher. Tesla is breaking out. If you guys are looking for a swingy in Tesla, this is the entry spot. Your first target is going to be 210, then 214, 213 to 214. All right, we're still waiting on that first target in NASDAQ. I like the little base that we're getting here on the one minute in NASDAQ. We're four points away from achieving target one in NASDAQ, and then we should start extending. This is the big line in the sand. Do we digest the 900 zone? 
this basically this first target is actually part of the entry. Okay, here we go. See how we snapped? We are at 907. SMP still at target one. I have seen um, pop-ups on CPI numbers, PPI numbers that when boom, higher, right off the bat, went a little bit higher into like almost to 10 o'clock and then they give everything back and then some. So I have seen the Dow, for example, and I remember very clearly because we traded it. So I've seen the Dow. Um, it was like three to 400 points up before the CPI numbers. It went up like another 300 points and then it gave everything back. It went actually, it closed right on the day. I'm not kidding. So, and it was also in an option expiration week. So be very mindful of these option expiration weeks. So analyze your journal and see if stop outs occur more into the option expiration week. And if they occur more into the option expiration week is because of, you know, the extreme volatility and often times price action is not true to technicals, true to value because the market is being manipulated. All right, let's see if we get a new high. Currently 907 for NASDAQ and we're extending a little bit higher in S&P. S&P, we have a high 54.23. At 9.55, we would be, I think that at 9.55, we would be able to start trailing a little bit more because we're not able to do anything right now. My ideal situation would be to start trailing SMP at 20, but it's not extended enough. So the trail in SMP could be break even. In about three minutes, or I should say less than three minutes. Lori, yes. Oil is not feeling it today. Dumping, dumping, dumping. Almost a dollar down from the 80s. We're developing some topping tails. It's a sign of like exhaustion and selling. We're coming into the uh, very close to the top of the hour. At the top of the hour, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is known for being a reversal time. We haven't had a reversal. So this market is keeping us on our edge. David, it's exactly what I um presented before we got into the trades have you been to the intro part at nine o'clock because i explained exactly what that means it means nasdaq long you forgot to put in an l where you typed it in it means NASDAQ long at 890 by a stop at 810. Yes. So it's NASDAQ L for long or S for short. And in this case, we're taking it long at 890 and the stop is at 810. So we're in the trade. All right, we have literally 10 seconds to go into 
and we're going to be closing these candles that are ugly. Not going to lie. Not pretty. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> See this candle here in Nasdaq? This is not good. It's... See? We, we can't we can't trail it here because the low of this candle is 87 our entry is 890 so we can't do anything we just have to uh hey Wes I'm gonna explain everything once we're out of the trade that's what I said at the beginning when I did the presentation before we started the trading day and the analysis I will explain everything now we're trading. Now we're trying to make money. Yeah, so don't worry. I'm going to answer all the questions. SM, you bet I'm not going to check anything now. <laughs> who, who cares? <laughs> okay, thanks for that. Okay, so the stops remain intact. YM, yuck. We're still keeping the original stops. NASDAQ stop is still 810. We're not going to mess around with it. I put an alert there so you guys can see it. It's 810. SMP remains at 5406. If they start violating those zones, that's not going to be a good sign. Very choppy session. Yeah, for now, Charles. Yeah. We are about a minute away from the top of the hour. If the price action is going to hold like this into the top of the hour, we're going to see new highs. But if they want to run the machines to the to take out these stops or the trail stops, then we're going to start moving lower. Uh, there's no doubt about the fact that this 54.20 is massive resistance in S&P, like literally. And in NASDAQ, we're confronted with a double resistance area from 900 and 920. You can see here that we went just a little bit higher right now. We went to 911, which is the 920 and the 900 resistance that we're dealing with right now. Once we eliminate that, we will have velocity for higher. And in fact, the S&P will have room. If it closes above the 20, let's say within this time sequence, we are a second, 10 seconds away, 
um, less likely that it's going to do it. But if it's going to do it, this is going to be the line of the sand. We close above a above 54.20. We're going to zip through literally um, um, 20 points higher because it has velocity from that point. And uh, the same with NASDAQ. NASDAQ needs to print the 920 and above. And if it takes out the 920 and above, then we're going to get into that velocity zone. And we're going to start accelerating higher into the 950 uh, and into the 19,000 ultimately. We have a doji right here. So that means we're in a limbo. It's going to be bullish above or it's going to start to pull back below the 60. On any tap into the 920, we're going to bring the stop to break even. Let's see how the price action is handling this. We still have about four minutes left in which the S&P has some time to get above the 20. Here we have NASDAQ going into the 20 zone. Less than three points away. We got to be so super realistic with to trade what we have right here. So I would advise, you know, take some partial profits into the 920s because you guys see that we have um, this move in YM and in Russell that it's taking the price a little lower into a retracement. So we have divergency. We have relative strength. We have divergency and Therefore, the S&P is going to try to hold, try to hold. You're going to see here that it's dangling into our, between our uh, entry point. It's going back and forth from the 10 EMA to the entry point. The Dow is giving everything back. Good job, Matt. Awesome. I'm still in. I have taken partial profits in ES at that 20, and I have taken some partial profits, very small, at in NASDAQ at 900. But other than that, I have not moved my stop. So I don't have a trail stop other than the original stop. S&P, uh, the reason why I said that I don't like the S&P is because, hold on a second. Um, the, sorry, not the one hour, the 15 minute could enter a cell setup. So that's why this level here is so important. We need to hold between the 10 and the 20. Wow, super divergency in these two guys. Yikes. We're still holding the 10 EMA. We're still holding the super trend in S&P and NASDAQ. So evidently they're much more stronger. You can see here why we need to apply wider stops because if you're having tight stops, it's just going to fleece you out. Might as well not take the trade. You don't have to take the trade if the stop is wide. You could wait until it kind of like it calibrates a little bit. But in this case, I don't think it's going to happen this week.
NASDAQ is uh, holding on really well. NASDAQ stop at break even. NASDAQ stop, raise the stop trail at break even. So if you were trading the full size contract, and if your entry was 890 like mine, place the stop there. The low, current low is 895. We have our stop at 890. No changes in ES. Okay, we are out of NASDAQ and we are still in ES. I don't know. I think that NASDAQ is so flaky here. Okay, so I'm currently out of NASDAQ. I don't feel great about it, but I was minimizing my risk because I'm still active in ES. And I, so here's my thought on this. You know, we're still in ES, we're holding by a thread here, but. We're still holding. The thing was, NASDAQ was at break even. I trailed based on the five minutes, so uh, into the pivot. And what I did was like, if they're going to start pulling back, instead of having two stop outs, right? Uh, I already collected some profits here into the 900, even though it was not really a great target, first target, but I collected some profits here. So I had a little bit of profit. And I'm like, I am not going to let this one stop out, right? So I had a little bit of profit on the um, on some uh, some contracts that I had here, and I put my stop at a break even, so I minimized the risk. Uh, and I'm still into the S and P. I just didn't want to have two indices that are uh, stopping, so I took the decision to tighten the stop in this one and let this one with the original stop. I'm still looking for NASDAQ to see if we could have a leg in. It's such a beautiful base here. Jose, which one? Do you see it here? This is the stop 5406. 5406. If you're trading micros, you should have a little bit below that, like I said in the intro this morning. Nothing hit stop.
Oh, anything above 900 and current, you mean um, in NASDAQ, if it starts taking out the 900? Yes, actually it's the 920. If it takes out the 920, it has velocity to go to 19,000 and then it's just gonna be a matter of trailing. I'm actually stocking NASDAQ again for a trade. And I'm gonna have NASDAQ long. 918, I think it's worth a try here. 918, and I'm gonna put my stop just below this 10 EMA here into the 875. Very important for those of you that are new, please do not, do not enter ahead of the, these triggers. If you are, you're on your own. Okay, but this is what I'm stocking right now. The targets are still gonna be the same. Obviously, we're not gonna be, we're gonna be looking for an extension above 920. So we're gonna target 950, 980, and of course, 19K. That's gonna be our goal. Like I said, I have seen situations in which the price was higher before the open, ran based on the CPI or the PPI numbers, and then starting with 10 o'clock, they started to rotate. And not only that, they gave all the gains back from the CPI numbers, but, or PPI numbers, but they started selling off. Remember, price action is not true to technicals and it's not true to value as we're trading into the option expiration week. It is what it is. It's funny because um, the S&P here, see what it did? It has this affinity on tapping into uh, the 20 SMA. Look at what it did here at 830. It did it again at 910, and it's doing it now. Now, literally, we're like one tick away from stopping out, but it's still holding. So it's uh, really nice here that we may get another trigger and the trigger can be again into the 16. So I cannot add, I was looking to see if I can add to the position. Unfortunately, I cannot add. But let's see if we hold that stop. Yeah, Stephen, I will explain everything once we're out of the trade and how I do it. All right, so we are, um, we're in NASDAQ again. Our stop is 875. I hope that wasn't a fake out. Apple is doing so good. Apple, Meta, on fire, NVIDIA, Broadcom. These are my favorite stocks to trade. Tesla, what did I tell you guys? Tesla higher. Come on market, rotate. We need, see Russell already rotated here. And why, why is that the verge of rotating? over 590, but it has a little bit of resistance here from the prior high that actually has confluence in the 600, super confluence. So we need to see it over 600 in order to start moving towards the 700. But if it's going to do it, we're good. If it's going to do it, we're good.
we have a doji. Nice doji here. So if we get it back into the 16, actually 15 to 16, we'll do it. Um, you could try. Nobody's holding you back, Matt. Matt, <laughs> you're gonna do, do whatever you want, whatever your style is, whatever your setup is. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna give you my take on the 900 level and see if, if it makes sense for you. So if I'm looking at a one minute chart, okay, I have the support, which is here. Okay. And let me just take this out. Okay. I have the support that is here into the 65 ish. We have our stop into the 75. Okay. Which I actually had to put the stop into the 65. Now that I'm looking at it, uh, you want to get it at 900. 900 is not a setup for the reason for that is because it's in the core of this range. So you have a 50, 50 shot. When you want to trade, you want to make sure that you either take a base breakout, for example, because this is the base. So you want to take it over 18, or if you want to short it, you want to go below the base. If you're taking the core, you're opening yourself to 90% losing on that trade. That's just my take. All right, so this little guy right here, the Dowski is really trying to defend. See, I, I should be placing my stop at 65. Yeah, I'm gonna put, move my stop at 65, guys. I'm gonna move my stop. I don't often do this, but in that stock, moving my stop to 65. All right, so moving my stop to 65. Just because I have this pivot low right here, which is minor support. So here we have resistance. And when this candle came in, it revisited the prior high. So I have my minor support here. So this is resistance, creates minor support. So basically prior resistance creates now support. I don't trade options. You enter it outside, like, for example, you either wait for a rotation to happen uh, or you wait for a breakout or a breakdown. In ongoing trends like this, breakdowns are not advised. I never do shorts within massive uptrends, not unless I have a reason to. The only time when I short something that is, and not, and I don't do it all the time, and I don't like to do it, and that's because it's not a profitable strategy. But for example, if we were to run like wildfire from now, let's say to about 12 o'clock or 12.15, and at 12.15, we're seeing the signs of topping. Then I would shift to a higher time frame, like on a 15 minute or even a 30 minute, and I would do a lunch fade, but I would not do it now. So I would do a lunch fade. Okay. That's the only time when I, where I would do it. Uh, by the way, guys, we, uh, I am out of the S&P. We had the uh, stop here and the original stop was 5406, 5406 hit. So we hit target one. I scaled a little bit out and then I had my stop right here, 5406. And I'm having the doji here. So Matt, because we're on the topic of entry. So what you want to see is you want to, you want to stick to a time frame. And if you guys, you know, I've been trading all the time frames and I have strategies that are based on one minute charts, two minute charts, whatever, but depending on the market environment, you need to apply those. So bottom line is that you want a reason to get in. You don't get in just because it's trading on an MA. You don't get in because it, you, you, you like the whole number. You get in for a reason. And the reason is either a pullback or a base or whatever the strategy is in that case. 
In here, we have a doji. Dojis are usually indecision candles, but the indecision candles are representing decision for us, which means that here, the buyers and the sellers met right here in the middle, right? So they did not reach a decision. Based on the uptrend that we're currently in, this could be a break above the doji high. So over 903 to 904, so again, the top of the candle here is 902. You don't want it at 902. You want it above 902, and you want it a little bit of like a couple of points above because you want to make sure that the current price action is able to tackle the prior high of this indecision. So you want to get it, for example, here, you want to get it at, let's say, 905. So if it prints at 905, it is acceptable entry, even though it's not such a textbook type of trade, but it's an accept acceptable entry and you place your stop below the low here. So if the low is 870, you place your stop just a little bit below, give it a couple of points at least because of the volatility. So this could be, for example, another setup. It's lining up with the trend. It has a sloppy three bar pullback into the, uh, let's say, into the uh, trend, into the power trend, but it's still trying to digest this 900. So this, this, if it makes any sense to you, this would be the strategy to go for. Okay, so it would be over this high, below this low, over the stop, and you're shooting for a target back into the 920. Now, the risk to reward uh, ratio for this kind of trading environment is definitely not there. Can it potentially be great and have follow through? Yes, because we're in a uh, we're into a massive uh, um, power trend um, in uh, Nasdaq. So Nasdaq remains one of the most interesting uh, plays out there because it could have the velocity to go into that nineteen thousand. The downside, and this is what I was telling uh, the TOL members at a 30, just before a 30 was around a 20 when we were looking to trade the CPI numbers and to see if there was anybody, anything setting up. And I said, you know what? Everything's kind of like extended. Uh, they pretty much kind of probably had some whispers numbers out that they were going by and the price action already accelerated higher. But when we opened... Here's what we have. We have one, two, three bars up. Typically, if you have a one, two, three up, you're going to be expecting a sort of a pullback. And we haven't had that. We haven't had that at 10 o'clock, right? So we're still holding pretty strong. This is the worst case scenario where the price action is levitating into the high tier. It means that it has ultra power, ultra strength. It is not ready to pull to, to pull back, actually. Okay, so this if that makes any sense. So right now in NASDAQ, uh, like I said, uh, our stop, I gave it a little bit more room uh, to the stop here. And uh, I moved my stop at 65. Honest to God, I'm telling you guys, like the stop still should be a 10 for, uh, for this uh, scenario. But we're going to keep it at uh, 65, giving it a little bit of room, which is fine. Okay. And I'm going to put an alert here so you guys have the visual as well. That's where the stop is. You see that we have a prior low. And not only that, but if you're looking at it on a two minute, we have these prior highs. We had the pullback exactly into the 65. We went a little bit higher. We actually made a new high here and we came back down. This is a slightly higher low on the two minute. Okay. All right. So... Kind of like here. It is. It is helpful. And I actually put it for myself. Yeah. I find it super helpful. I don't like to use hard stops on the platform, but that's a different topic, different story. You guys put your stops in. I have my reasons for that. Um... Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. The reason for that is because the uh, brokers know exactly where our stops are, exactly where our entries are. So I'm fine with them knowing where my entries are, but I don't want them to see my stops. 
And in fact, when we're trailing and too bad we have such a crappy market in which you can't see how we trail. But um, when we're trailing, I specifically instruct in the trading room, just don't raise your stop yet. I'm going to tell you when to take the profits because our brokers are selling the data to hedge funds, are selling data to um, uh, non-friendly day trade retail traders <laughs> um, companies. So there. Okay, that's the reason. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at some 15-minute candles here uh, that are very interesting. Uh, we could potentially have in the Dow a trigger above uh, 595. Uh, I'm sorry, 695. Six, what, is, what is this one? Okay, yeah. Six, uh, 645 over 645 here. So let's just put an alert here. Okay, so just a, a little bit above this. So that would be like 50 is acceptable in here. 50 is accept, acceptable. So that would work. And we could put the stop into the 500. So that would be that would be the stop. Okay. Um, okay, so this would be the, yeah, this would be the stop. This would be the entry then set a five minute rotation. Uh, the S&P on the 15 minute here, see it's still struggling with the 20s. I would love to re-enter. Um, I don't know if I should because I'm still active in NASDAQ and plus I gave it a little bit more room. I gave it 10 points. So I think I'm going to stick with NASDAQ for now. I'm just going to stick with NASDAQ for now, but... If everything is going to start rotating, wow, look at these wigs that we're having here in um, RTY. Uh, Jose, I'm using uh, TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim by Schwab. And I, I'm going to tell you something like, for example, if you're trading with full size contracts, Schwab is great for you. If you trade with micros, Schwab is bad. It's not great. Um, I would suggest interactive brokers, um, trade station, something else, ninja, anything else. But it's it, it's it's kind of expensive to trade micros on this one, and especially if you're in and out, in and out a lot, you know. It's going to cost you. So at the end of the month, even if you made money, all your, you're going to end up in the hole because the broker is going to take all your money away from you in fees and commissions. So stay away from that if you're doing um, micros. What I do suggest, however, uh, for charting purposes, I think that, and it's my opinion, I'm telling you what I think. In my opinion, think or swim, is the best platform with the best software that has all the indicators that you need. Everything is free. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need to do anything. And it's fully worth it. I know a lot of uh, traders, for example, that prefer the Ninja platform. I, however, do not like it. I have tried it. I do not like it. I like the thinkorswim platform. Charles, I like the thinkorswim. You can have a thing. So here's the thing. The thinkorswim platform is free. So you could actually sign up for uh, Schwa uh, to uh, open a paper money account. And um, if you want to have data, just put $500 on it. Obviously, it's your money. You could actually invest it in something. You could buy something. Uh, and um, Ninja Ninja Trader is not expensive for micros. It's not that expensive. I just don't like the platform at all. I don't. I I just don't like it. I just don't like it. That's <laughs> just a personal preference. All right, keep that uh, stop intact at sixty five. We're not going to give it room. If sixty five is going to be violated, we're not going to be in the trade. Uh, by the way, YM here is possibly setting up. 
a little bit tighter than before. So it's doing a rotation. Let's see if it's going to do the rotation here. But that's just my take. I've been trading for uh, for so long and I have been trading with so many platforms and on so many platforms that I could give you my two cents on what um, what's out there. That, that you can trade with any uh, with any prop firm. The only thing is that when you're selecting a prop firm, select one that uh, that gives you pay that that you know is going to pay you in case you make profits. So I've I've known Top Step for many 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 years. I met them personally in Chicago. I like trading view. Yes, I like trading view. Yes, trading view is a nice software to have for charting. I have to agree with you David on this one. I I love top step because and my nephew has top step is trading on top step. He's very young, so. No, 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 it's not the only one. If you do your due diligence, there is so many out there. Uh, okay, so NASDAQ is coming in. Um, it came in at A66. We have our stop at A65. I actually have a hard stop, okay? So I actually have a hard stop. So I'm not going to change my stop again we're seeing that there's a shift and by the way it's 10 30 10 30 is prime time trigger time so because we didn't have a reversal time okay i'm out of nasdaq so i stopped in nasdaq so i have one stop in nasdaq okay NASDAQ stopped. All right, so now we need to wait for the market to recalibrate and see, uh, you know, why it's doing what it's doing, okay? So we try to uh, try to um, understand from the timing perspective what we can expect moving forward. Like I said, we are still in really strong uptrends into these indices, very, very strong uptrends. And for that reason, I'm just going to move this on the five minute and I'm going to take these out and we're going to reshuffle everything back to the five minute. OK, so I was saying that everything is still into an uptrend. You could see that the levels are being trying to are trying to hold. Yet the price action is becoming super, super flaky, super fleecy. You can see the tails up, the tails down. So the price action is trying to hold, but at the same time, it's taking the stops out. It's getting people in. It's stopping them out, right? So it's just trying to establish a new range. And this is because we haven't had a pullback into 10 o'clock. Uh, oftentimes when 10 o'clock hits, you need to have a pullback. And you can see here that we had somewhat of a pullback in S&P but it was not enough here. So you can see how flaky it is. So it's trying to determine more ranges. By the way, this is an 11 and a half point candle. This is extreme. Then we have this one right here, which is a 50 point candle. That's what I'm trying to say is that they're trying to zoom in on the ranges. When they're doing that, they're basically saying, hey, we don't want any retail traders in. We just want, you know, we're creating this action because we want to accumulate more contracts. So this is the fleecing effect. This is what happens behind the fleecing effect. When you're seeing that the trend is not altered, when the trend is still intact, however, you're stopping out of a trade that should continue higher or you're stopping out of the trade because it you know, fleeced out, right? And you can see that it took all the, uh, all the tails out and it fleeced down right? It's just them saying that, hey, you know what? 
stay out of our way because we're in charge here. We want to get cheaper prices. They basically see that NASDAQ needs to go to 19,000. That is the trajectory. NASDAQ is not going to stop here. NASDAQ is going to go to 19,000 and it's going to go there today. It's just that we just, they're fleecing us out because they don't want to, us to get in there with them, right? They want our contracts. That's why they, they're stopping us out. So they take our contracts and they are lifting them higher. Okay. <clears throat> That's my take on the market today. Like I said, we have had, I'm going to take you now to, um, to a different page. Okay. So I'm going to take you to my home screen. And by the way, stay tuned. I may be getting back in to NASDAQ. Okay. So when I trade, okay, I look at this screen. That screen is for trailing, for this and that and whatever, whatnot. Um, those screen that I'm sharing in the trade room, it's for setups only. The analytical screen is this one right here, where I'm watching absolutely all the time frames. Now, as you can see, I don't have any time frames on these upper time uh, on these upper windows, the one minute through the 15. However, I do have pre-market data on the one hour daily, weekly and monthly, right, which are super essential in analyzing. Um, and as you can see here, we still have uh, we still have the base, which is very, very, very strong here. And notice I don't have pre market data here. That's right. Uh, Martin, yes, that's the re there are reasons why I don't have it. Anyways, so bottom line is that my thought and my an an analysis process here is that if we take out this very high 22 and a half, there's gonna be another base breakout. This is the highest point. So we need to take the highest point again. We try to take the highest point into the uh, 918 when we, uh, when we did it. And that's why we played the sandwich here because we had the high at 16 and gave it a little bit more room. So we had it at 18 for the entry. We had a tighter stop there at 875, but then we decided to go a little bit deeper into 65 because of the price action. Uh, but now we're, it's setting up again. So this time around, and like I said in the beginning, the battleground is between the 900 and the 920. This is the massive resistance. So if we manage to take out the 920s, we have really nice optimum space all the way into the 19,000. And 19,000 is confluence. The reason why we're stalling here is because you see this low right here from 725. Yeah, I see it too. This is why we're having problems into the 900 because this is support. And now this is minor resistance on price. Minor resistance reads trends. So from this point on, what it what this pivot here is showing this whole actually this whole entire base is telling the price here is that it should turn around and be short at this point. But the market is strong. So with the market is fighting the downtrend that is on the daily because we have the high, lower high, lower high lower high and that's pretty much it so we have one two three lower highs other than the top here so if the market is able to digest the 900 to 920 it's gonna try to escape into the rubber band of the 20 sma okay this is it the other reason why and many of you guys in here you know may not may may you know hear this for the first time and we go like oh wow what the heck is that? So you guys see here, this is a weekly chart, right? And the weekly chart right here into the 900 and 920 is right into resistance. You see this uh, 20 SMA right here? This is resistance, okay? So it's right into resistance. So it has confluence resistance, right? It has tons of confluence resistance from the weekly, from the daily, right here from this whole support zone. In fact, from this pivot here, because we went down one, two, three, lifted, and then we kind of like meandered here. It was like in a shock wave. It was going back and forth. And this would be uh, this would be the area where we would escape. 
So it's a little bit actually above 19,000, but 19,000 is, you know, um, a whole number. It's a psychological level. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm pretty confident that if throughout the trading day today, we break above this high, the 22 and a half, we are going to set up uh, new highs. And in fact, everything is setting up for high. So, for example, if you look at the Dow, which was one of the weakest this morning, along with Russell, right, you can see the choppiness. This is a 15 minute trigger. So this could actually be playable over the high. So over 506 over 605 sorry dyslexic here over 605 605 is the high rate here and the stop is under 500 so this is going to be um uh this is going to be so again it's going to have a really wide stop that's the volatility you can't cut it and say hey i'm going to take it here but i'm going to put my stop here might as well not take the trade because you're going to get stopped out okay this is actually good. I actually like it. I think we're going to take it. So let's take 607. Why I'm long. We're going to do the 607 and we're going to place our stop under 500. Just, just a couple of points under 500. Okay, let me just place it on my platform. All right, and our targets are going to be 650 and we're gonna go for uh, 670, 700. 700 is gonna be a big one. And if not, <clears throat> it, it, not if not, but we actually have room to the high this session today, which is a little bit above uh, 750. So that's going to be uh, the target. So the last one is 750. All right. So yeah, let's do this. And okay, let's go back to our trading screen right here. They're all setting up, guys. They're all setting up. They're all setting up. See, S&P again is the trigger over 16. If you want to do a yes, long, it's again above 16 and 5,400 for the stop. With the same targets. And NASDAQ, I'm going to do NASDAQ again. All right, so uh, YM, I'm triggered in, so I have already been filled in YM. But uh, I want to take a piece of NASDAQ to uh, S&P triggered NASDAQ. I'm going to do 23 in NASDAQ. I'm going to do 23 and my stop going to be under this pivot so it's going to be 855 okay yeah <laughs> i love that word um matt is asking how do you confidently distinguish between pullbacks and rollovers super easy matt so if you stick with the trend, pullbacks are always going to be super shallow. And when you want to go long, for example, you're looking for shallow pullbacks. You're looking for two, three candles to maximum of four candle, four or five candle pullback. The rollover comes only when you have the rollover. Lo rollover, no, that use a different term. Pullback and let's say downtrend or something, because rollover is something different in futures. Okay, is when we roll from this quarter to the next quarter. Okay, so you mean avalanche down, a pullback from avalanche down or something like that. And if you're referring to that, right? Yeah, no, no, no. So if you're referring to that, um, no worries, we're here to learn. Do you think I knew all, the, all this stuff when I started trading? Oh my God, of course not. <laughs> uh, so the difference, when you should the reversal there you go okay i couldn't even think of the word pullback and re pullbacks are reversals 
Okay. Pullbacks are reversals, but your a pullback is when you get, for example, a rotation. So this, let's say you're looking at this can. Okay, this one is more evident in SMP. This is a reversal. A reversal is nothing else but a sell setup in an ongoing trend that should not be shorted. So a reversal is characterized by either a doji here or a topping tail here or even a full candle here, but it should be accompanied by a candle that takes and breaks the prior low of this decision bar. And when it takes this out, it's usually pulling back to the next MA, which is the 10 EMA, or let's say if it continues lower than 20 SMA. And in very strong ongoing trends, they're going to rotate and start moving, uh, start moving higher. Okay. So for YM, we're going to be looking at a 650 for a first target. And for S&P, we're going to be looking again at 20. We don't have a choice. It's the same entry. So S&P target is going to be uh, uh, the 20. And if it takes out the 20, we're going to start moving higher. Here goes NASDAQ. And we're going to be in full trail mode. Like we could care, like we know where the targets are, but we're going to be in full trail mode. You see guys what they did? They stopped everybody out. They stopped everybody out. All right. So the next target in NASDAQ is going to be 950. 950. institutions okay so let's focus on these trades still 950 and 950 you could peel some off if you want we're almost there we have a high 945 we're into target at SMP S&P, like I said, same targets. We're going for 20, 40, 60. Let's see if they're going to run. Now we need a print of 25 in S&P in order to start moving higher. We need that desperately. Almost there. Target one is still 950. YM is two points away from target one. No changes yet on the trail. Oh, this is a long freaking day. <laughs> Not a friendly trading environment. All right. We have the 50s. Peel some out. You know the drill. If you want to take half off, you can take half off up to your risk tolerance, whatever your risk tolerance is. No changes in the Dow just yet. No changes in anything. You can see that we're uh, escaping a little bit higher and then we're stalling.
See, we're not ex escaping so far from um from the triggers. We have minor support now by 23 and now stock. 23 was the trigger. I really don't want to put my stop here because it's just like I would be saying like, you know what? <laughs> like take me out. Okay, so ideally I want this level to hold. Theoretically, it could start pulling back to the 10 EMA or back again into the 84, but it's all about this candle here to see how we close. And we have about three minutes to go. That's a long time. That's a really long time. You can see that the price action is not having velocity it's trading in hiccups. Richard, what I'm trying, what I have been saying all day is that yes, the trend should be higher and they're super clear, incredibly clear. I have presented arguments why the trends are so clear and why we should not short this. What I'm saying is that the environment is flaky and it's flaky because the price action is not having continuation. And you can see that the price action is only moving up in one candle and then there's the hiccup. You can't tell me that this is a trend right here. So we have been living through chop from 945 until 1045, one hour. This right here, one hour, does not represent a great trading environment. In my book, at least. Because to me, this looks like a Christmas light effect. It goes up and down. Green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. It's a total chop that we have here. Now we see if we are going to be heading higher. So, yeah. Let's see if we get the the um, NASDAQ. Well, first of all, NASDAQ, we need to get at over 50. 50 is a huge, 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 huge target area, which was achieved. But you don't know. The next pit stop is going to be 80. And I don't know, I think, Matt, you said something about the pre-market high, something. I have to scroll back, but you're right. Why am pre-market? Oh, why am pre-market resistance? Yes, right here. Correct. This is Matt. Awesome. See, this is exactly where we got our target one from. Perfect. Awesome. Good job. Um... And I will explain, I promise you guys, like I'm still in trades and right now all these three trades I'm in. Uh, and I will explain platform. I will explain a lot of things, anything. I'll answer all your questions, but it's just that I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to try to do here and there, but I'm very careful about trailing. It's very hard to talk and trade. <laughs> um... Eden, are the pivot points shown in your chart still valid after they have been tested? Yes. Yes, they're still going to be there. You mean they, these dotted lines? Yeah, they're going to be here. Oh, was it prudent to hold by M without a full-blown breakout? I mean, once you have the setup, there are two things. Um, you place your entry, you place your stop, right? You typically are either exiting when you hit all your targets and start your trailing or you're out when you stop out, but you should hold it because this is just target one. 
your next target is at the whole number right here. So yeah, you should be holding it. I'm holding it. Okay, so here's my thought on this. We're very close to minor support. Our entry in NASDAQ is 23. So I would say, like I said, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this market because it's not continuing. So it doesn't have follow through has very little follow through. It's very choppy. So we, we had a first impulse this morning into the first 15 minutes. And then we had one hour of freaking range. <laughs> and then we had another pop up. And then here we need to see, are you willing to sit through the trade? I don't know. I What I'm going to do in NASDAQ, I'm going to put my stop at, uh, put my stop at a break even. NASDAQ, stop at break even. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. Bam. So I'm safe there. And in S and because I've already hit target one and I have already taken uh, half of my size out. And here, because I have a little bit above 16, I'm going to still put it S and P stop and break even. I want to be safe. Hey, I want to be safe. I have achieved target one. I want to be safe again. I'm not seeing follow through yet. So, all right. And in, um, in the Dow here, what is this low 20? I'm going to put my stop at 20. Okay. Uh, so in YM, I'm going to be trailing 620. Bam. Awesome. Because in the Dow as well, I have hit target one, right? So now I'm comfortable because I know that I have literally two risk free trades in which I've locked in break even. I have collected a little bit of profit. And I have one trade where I'm a little bit up, right? And I'm trailing a little bit, you know, um, higher because my entry was 607. So, and I already hit target one. So now I'm comfortable. <laughs> now I can ask, now I can answer questions. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um... Okay, there was a question. I'm not going to scroll up, but there was a question about trailing. Uh, Jose, you trade stocks and options, uh, never futures. Could you later tell us how uh, um, know how to take the long trade? Of course, of course, of course. Okay, cool stuff. Okay, so number one, let's talk a little bit about trailing, right? And then I'm going to go into the platform things. And I'm doing this while I'm still in trades, but anyways. So uh, trailing. I get in based on position size, right? Position sizing is um, basically my entries minus, our, uh, minus my stops, right? So for NASDAQ is 23 Okay, minus 855. That is my risk per trade. And my target is somewhere into the 19,000 and actually into the 1920 to 1940. Okay, so that would make it about a, roughly about, let's say, a 2R trade. So that means that I'm risking, let's say, $100 and I'm trying to make $200, right? So I'm risking one risk unit and I want to make two rewards right based on it two times two times the risk that's basically what i'm what i'm shooting for here so um when when i achieve for example like within the current context in which we're trying to uh break the i would say micro downtrend that we have been in nasdaq uh, since we have topped in in July, I wish I could show you this, but any, anyways, I, I can't because I, I don't want to move charts around because I have my active traders and I need to trail my trades, but I will show you a little bit later. So basically I showed you earlier that we have a high and three lower highs and three lower lows in NASDAQ. Theoretically, that is a downtrend, but because we have not violated a prior low from April, that still makes it in an uptrend. So that is a micro downtrend within the uptrend. Okay, it may sound crazy, but anyways. Um, 
So bottom line is that we're looking to um, take partial profits into resistance zones. Now, the resistance, the ultimate goal for the trade is to get it into 19,000, right? Or 19, 19,040. Um, that is my ultimate goal. So that is my last R. But when I'm looking at the technical chart, I am also seeing, have a good one, Richard. What I'm seeing is that I have other resistance levels along the way. So like I said, I have the 900, I have the 920, I have the 950, I have the 980s. All these levels are hiccups, okay? And I cannot be um, complacent and say, hey, I'm going to wait for the 19,000. I could do that if I would have a better entry based on a higher time frame, but I don't, right? Because if I look at a higher time frame, for example, on a one hour, right? If I look at this one hour, what do I see? I see the open of the New York trading session and the froth, right? So I'm seeing it in the froth. So the overnight trading session already took the price higher. We already had CPI numbers that pushed the price uh, higher, right? And we're left with what? With an extended market. Now, if we would have opened here, I have no doubt about it that we would have continuation. The problem and the fact that we're not getting price action continuation right like that is because we are already extended. We are one, two, three, four, for four hours we have been running. Think about yourself. Think about you running for four hours continuously. Wouldn't you get tired? Of course you would, right? And you would want to slow down and catch your breath. And this is exactly what the price action is doing here. This is catching up because it had ran already for three hours before the open, right? And it was super extended and it was tired, right? It hadn't had a pullback. So that's the reason for these ranges here. And that's why they were just slopping around back and forth, back and forth. That's why we're not seeing a continuation, right? We're not seeing the, the blast of the continuation, right? So bottom line is that, yes, the market could go there because it has an open void. So obviously after it opens up above the, that, uh, that 920, it has an open point, but it has another resistance point into the 950. And now you can see that we punched into the 950 and we're balancing where between the 920 and the 950, we're still, you know, we're still dangling in here, right? And like I said, right from this morning, I said, I have no doubt that the market is going to head bam into the 19,000 and even above 19,000. But it's a matter of, can you sit in the trade as a day trader? Because for traders that got in here, uh, where's the one hour? Here it is. The traders that got in here at eight o'clock, oh yeah, this is awesome, right? Because you would have captured this whole move. I mean, you had a rotation, you had a, you had a really nice risk to reward ratio. This is like four hour trade right here. Okay, it's like a four hour trade. By the way, this is moving higher. Beautiful, beautiful. We're into the 25. Remember, we need to balance between 20 and 25 here. And then we're going to raise the stop a little bit as we're getting closer to the 40s, if we are going to get closer to the 40s. And so far, like I said, choppy session, but let's hope that we're going to have that continuation. Um, uh, by the way, target, uh, target number two in the Dow has been achieved at 70. We had target number two at 70 achieved. We have 30 more points into the 70. We're going to, uh, trail it a little bit more, um, onto the five minute. I think we're going to raise the stop, I think to 30. Yeah. Let's raise the stop in YM to 30. I mean, it's better to have a small slice than no slice at all, right, of the profits. Uh, why I'm trail. Trail means you're raising your stop, okay, raising your stop. Take that cursor and drag the stop up a little bit if you're trading on thinkorswim. Um, 630, okay, so we're going to be trailing 630, okay. 
All right, we're into the 60s in NASDAQ. We have the next target in NASDAQ at 980. All right, so, so back to the trailing discussion, okay? So when I achieve target one, target one for me is the easiest target to achieve because we're going by strong triggers based on setups and a lot of algos are going to follow right? So they're, they're seeing the same things that we see. So that's why you're seeing the follow through. You see that when we get in immediate, we get response, we get action to the upside. Now we are not getting the follow through because I've just explained to you that the market is extended. And that's why we're not getting the follow through that we need it, but it's still following through, but not as we want it to, right? Not with velocity. And um, what I do is typically I watch price action. If I see that the price action is having a hard time reaching target one, I'm going to take half the profits out of target one, okay? Or if I'm trading in an extended market like I showed you because the market was already three hours up at the open, I am taking half the profits out of target one. Target one, remember, it is the last, it is the, uh, it is the, um, um, it's the fastest, target to achieve and it's most of the time like for us here at trade all out target one has a 95 percent success rate so at target one bam it hits target one what happens after target one well that's when you need follow through that's when you need continuation so basically what i do in trailing for those of you that were asking about trailing and how much do i take out on target one at target one i typically take out half if I see that the price, but here's the thing, I don't put uh, an, um, a limit order to exit at target one. I let it break above a little bit. And once it's dangling a little bit into that area, then, you know, I observe price action on the one minute and the two minute. You saw how I have my charts all set up. And I see if the price action is having a hard time, bam, I'm quick on the profits, taking half at target one. If I see that the price action is crushing through target one like butter and it's accelerating higher, then I'm raising my stop to target one and I'm letting the price go. And that's when I enter into trail mode with the whole entire position, okay? And now my target one becomes my trail stop. Does that make sense? Okay, does that make sense? So that that's how I uh, that's how I use it, and that's what I do at target two. Right, not done. <laughs> target two. You always need to have predetermined targets, and you need to know how to react into the targets. Once you have that as part of your trading plan, trading is going to be a breeze because you're going to know based on technicals and based on the setups that you have already learned. What a, where your entry is, where your stop is, where your target one, two, three, four, five is, and then everything, you're just going to wait for the trade. You're just going to wait and see how you're going to be trailing the trade. That's it. That's, that's your whole thing. So trading is a whole lot easier and stress-free, literally. I mean, have you seen me stressed over here? Like, and I'm in so many trades right now and three trades right now. By the way, keep the trail stop in YM tight at three zero. It's currently trading at three two. Okay, no trail stop yet in ES. Although ES, we're gonna move the stop in ES. Uh, ES, 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 ES. Um. You know what? Take it at, uh, let's make it just below this. It's, see, it's at 19 right now. It's right into the 10 EMA here. I want to keep it at 20. Um, no, don't make any changes yet. We have, we still have that uh, break even. 16 because we collected profits at 20 by the way if you have not taken profits in es don't be complacent you can see that the market is having a hard time accelerating because it's extended right uh it's actually we have entered the fifth hour 
fifth hour for the uh, for the up uh, for the up. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep uh, Nasdaq and S and P with the same trail stops. Okay. Uh, and yes, we are out of the Dow, so that's good. All right. All right. All right. Just want to make sure here. Okay, perfect. All right. So when the price action, so if you have, for example, and then we're going to get to contracts and how you trade with multiple contracts and how you trade with one contract, okay? Or how you trade with one unit. Maybe you don't, maybe you're trading with five contracts. So you have multiple contracts, but you want to treat it as a whole. And what do you do then? Okay. So let me wrap it up with the trail. So at target one, half out, depending on price action. If the price action is very active and you see that the price action is going through your target one like butter, then what you need to do is raise up your stop to that target one level. So therefore that will serve as your trail stop for the rest of the position, I mean, for the entire position. If you're seeing the price action like today, be a little bit more um, active and proactive in your trailing because you can see here that we don't have any guarantee of follow through. So therefore you're gonna take half into target one. And as soon as you can, based on price action, make sure that you have, a, and if you have a pivot into a break even level, then move your stop to a break even level, okay? But only when technically is possible. If it's not technically possible, do not raise it, okay? Because in choppy markets, oftentimes traders see target one, they take it, and then what they do is they raise the stop immediately to break even. Make sure that your stops are below pivots, right? If you're going long and your stops are above pivots if you're going short, okay? Because if you're putting and slicing them, and if I say, yeah, let's trail 22, what's 22? It's it's actually the core of this price action. So you might as well take it all out, okay? So if you're trading with multiple contracts, okay? If you're trading with multiple contracts, what I have been talking about now, like to take half out, to take, let's say a quarter out at target two, and the rest you leave for trailing. So the rest even if you have a target, let's say, let's say now in NASDAQ, because I have already achieved, let's say, let's say I have achieved two targets in NASDAQ, hypothetically, okay? I achieved two targets in NASDAQ. The last target, let's say it's 19,000. So when I see the price at 19,000, you either want to take it because you want to be done on the day, or you keep it in and you keep on trailing it because it could potentially have more juice in it if it has more room for the upside. And like I said today, I said, I have no doubt that we may smash, crash into the 19,000, but we could actually go a little bit higher into uh, um, like the frothy, frothy side of resistance is 19,040. We could still go there. So why cut your winner short, okay? Always leave the last lot for trailing, for further trailing. And don't be like, don't be under pressure that, oh my gosh, I got to take profits or whatever. A lot of traders are putting their uh, limits, you know, to uh, cover the trade immediate, immediately. If they're short or if they're long, they want to take their profits immediately if they hit target. That is the biggest mistake ever because what you need to do is you need to let the price run. Okay, so what happens if you are trading with one contract or 10 contract and if you, let's say, want to trail the whole position, the whole thing? This is my favorite thing to do. So... When you do that, you treat it, so whether you have 10 contracts or 20 contracts or 100 contracts or one, you treat it as the same. So when you trade with one contract or with a whole lot that you don't want to divide and say, oh, I don't want to take partial profits at target one. I don't want to take partial profits at target two. And this is what I most often do when the price action is 
trending and i there's no doubt about it that we're having a trendier market in fact this morning i said we are in super trend in nasdaq and nasdaq is still in super trend okay but at the same time it's not having the follow through that it should have to achieve targets it should have snapped like this we should have been at nineteen thousand an hour ago like seriously maybe an hour and a half we should have been there already we're going there very slow, okay? And that's because we're extended. So when you are trading with one contract, and this careful because this is for small accounts or really large accounts with minimum, minimum exactly, exactly, we're grinding higher. And this is, this is good for swing trading, but it's not good for a day trader. It's not good because it's gonna put, uh, it's gonna put our patients to the test and there is going to, yeah, and multiple stopouts because you're tempted to, you know, trail it a little bit more. All right. Uh, let me just take a quick look at NASDAQ here. So we have the 920. Uh, we have the 935. Mm. I think we should raise the stops a little bit here uh let's do well obviously in smp we should do let's do 20 smp first smp let's uh trail meaning lift your stop out to 5420 and in nasdaq i mean we don't want to be complacent you know what i mean let's do 940 Let's do 940. We have already achieved the 950 and we're raising the stop to 940. So that's not bad. Okay. All right. Okay. So back to trailing with one lot or with multiple lots. But if you don't want to ease out, scale out into targets, what you do is you do price action trailing. You keep the whole entire, the whole entire position or the whole entire contract. When you hit target one, you're going to be very diligent. And ideally, uh, when after you hit target one, you move your uh, charting. So, for example, if you took the trade, let's say, on a five minute like I did here, and if you had an entry and you have, let's say, achieved target one, what you do is you go one time frame lower and you try to find out a, a trail, a stop where you can place it, a pivot where you can place your trail stop okay so you don't give back as much uh as much as you would be trailing it on the five minute okay so what what i typically do is that i lower the time frame so let's say i entered the, on the five minute i don't take any action until i hit target one and when i hit target one i look at one minute and two minute to see if i can reduce my risk to as close as uh, to to break even, let's say to a break even level to a, a to a close enough level around the break even. Sometimes it may not even be break even. Sometimes it's a little bit lower than break even, which is fine. But it, as long as it's not the original stop. So in case the price is going to turn around, I'm not going to lose on the second half of the trade, right? Or I'm not going to lose because I'm not taking partial profits, right? So I'm reducing my risk constantly as the price is going for me, right? And this is exactly what we did here. So in, uh, in YM, we took it, let me go back to the five, right? In YM, we took the breakout again over the highest point into the 923. We have a very wide stop. We punched through the resistance. We moved higher, right? And right now we're grinding again, but at least we're, uh, we're ascending. You have the option to trail based on five minute candles. And in fact, here you can see that we, you could actually lock in 950. Yeah, you can lock in 950 if you want. And if you have the whole entire position, because you are not able to scale it out. If you're with one contract, you cannot break it, right? Let's say you're trading with one, one micro. Literally, you cannot break that into other pieces. And you go like, hey, we're 10 minutes into the... Um, doldrum period london session is going to close right away 
you know what? I want to trail. And besides, this is a doji. I want to trail a little bit tighter because there's a strong chance that if we break below 950, we're going to get back into the 10 EMA where this cluster is at. Okay. So if you want, you could trade, uh, you can trail it right now. And actually we could do that. NASDAQ trail 950. So we squeeze more money out of it. So NASDAQ trail at 950. Okay. Um, in here in SMP, we don't have a choice, right? In SMP, we don't have a choice. Um, there is a choice, let's say this 22, but what's 20, what's 22? Like that doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, Mitchell is saying, how about across below the 10 EMA, uh, across below the 10 EMA here? Um, one, two, three minute chart, cause it can start. No, no, it's still, you can see here what happened. So we had the, uh, the slingshot lower. So it, this is was a four sell for them to get uh, to get more contracts. That that's what it was. That's what it was. Okay, we could actually start trailing uh, S and P at twenty two. Uh, yeah, let's do that. S and P trail twenty two. So we don't give anything back. So let's go here on the one minute. Let's say on the two minute. Yeah, this would be in sync with our trail here at fifty. So if you don't want it to violate this. That sounds good. Yeah. It depends on the time frame, Frank. I mean, that's a little odd strategy, but if, if you're applying that on five minute or 15 minute, you're giving a lot of money back. If you're doing it on the one and the two minute, I don't know. If you do the first red bar uh, on a five minute, it makes more sense. But the second bar, it doesn't make any sense. But if it works for you, don't change a thing. That's just my take. All right, guys. So we're still in these trades. And let me just answer more questions about the platform. Everybody was asking what indicators I use. I use the 10 exponential moving average, which is the pink indicator here. I use the 20 simple moving average. The 50, please disregard this moving average is not for day trading. I use it for swing trading and I use the 200 simple moving average. So basically, basically these three moving averages, the 20 uh, and the 200 simple. Here we have a brand new high NASDAQ. Uh, and I use the uh, 10 exponential moving average. This is the only exponential moving average. The uh, the dotted lines are pivot points. Uh, there are seven pivot points that you guys are going to see. Let me just uh, squeeze them in here. There's a yellow, three green, and three red. Three red uh, support, three green resistance, medium pivot point. That's the core of the move. And uh, other than that, it's price action. This is what I use. Um, also, I do use volume. I pay attention to volume. Let me show you what uh, these other charts. And basically, when I trade, I trade off these charts right here. Okay, so you see my ch uh, my chart right here, my screen. Uh, I trade off of these charts, so I'm constantly monitoring the one minute, the two minute, the five minute, the fifteen minute for momentum. I use, I use volume on all of these charts because I need to see when the volume is going down when the volume is increasing at what level it is. You can see here that the volume for this time of the day, for example, in NASDAQ is super low. So I know that I'm having a very, that's why, that's one of the reasons why I'm not having uh, the um, acceleration for price. Okay. Um. NASDAQ trail 55, 955. Okay, and for the S&P, we have a 22 trail, trail 25, trail 25, 54, 25. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. 
All right. So yeah. And one of the reasons why you're not seeing the volume pick up here is because we have uh, data that is coming in tomorrow and it's, we're going to have the same type of crappy environment, meaning like for day trading. When I say crappy, I mean like the stops are going to be wide. Follow through is going to be with a big question mark. Th that's the type of thing. It, it, it's basically, it doesn't matter what kind of day it is. It's, they're all tradable days, but uh, tomorrow we have the CPI numbers that are coming uh, that are coming at 8:30. Okay, so that's going to be again a big roller coaster. And then on Thursday we have unemployment claims and other other data that is coming as well pre market. So uh, that's why the environment is a little bit low on the low volume side. Okay, a little bit on the low volume side. All right, so keep the stop at uh, 55. We're currently at 56 in NASDAQ. Let's take it back to the charts again. All right, uh, we are out of the S&P. Perfect. All right, awesome. And NASDAQ still, okay, we're out of NASDAQ as well. We made money. I'm going to share with you guys the results from my platform. Um, and yes, there is going to be a recording. I'm going to send it to you guys today. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Let's see some other questions. Uh, Sarita, can you give more information on trading system you mentioned at the beginning? Uh, also, is there a trading room for swing trading futures? We use the same trading room uh, here uh, for uh, swings and futures. We don't have a lot of swings and futures. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the stops are really, really wide due to the volatility. But um, uh, we do have, <laughs> excuse me, we do have an active trade, uh, for example, in bond that I was going to bring up later at, uh, at this session when, uh, we're going to do the review of the trading environment. Um, so we have, we have very few, let's say swing trades that are called, um, I could show you probably my portfolio with swing trades tomorrow. Um, uh, for example, we have bond. Uh, that is an active trade at 123.19. Uh, and uh, it triggered today at 123.19. Uh, we have targets into 126 and higher. Um, we do have trades in typically in gold and oil futures. Uh, indices have had like a really tremendous uh, risk. Uh, but they work beautifully. Okay. So I was on Twitter and I called this trade. I didn't get, uh, you know, I didn't get in right away. I waited a little bit, but I got into the next day, but the risk was super wide was right here into the three, three, zero. So I'm not even calling this as an official trade because how many traders can literally take this, uh, with an entry very close to, um, the, the 450 level and have the stop. Uh, and that is 18,450, uh, let's say, uh, with a stop at 17,330. So it doesn't make any sense for me to call these. Uh, but um, yeah. Uh, but again, it worked beautifully. You could see the post on my Twitter, uh, Twitter page. And uh, yeah, so I, I don't talk about these. These are, you know, and, and within... I mean, you should still be in, like if you took this as a swing, yeah, you should still be in, but the risk level is really, really wide. So I'm not making these official calls, but uh, we caught some phenomenal trades in gold. We talk, we caught some phenomenal trades in oil, but not, not in indices lately. But it, 
if um uh if it should set up we're calling them within the first two hours in the trading room okay um I, okay let's see uh, so Jim, did I uh, answer your question? The dotted lines, the green, the orange. So these are three resistance areas and um, the yellow right here or orange, whatever it is, is the center, the core. And then we have three dotted lines to the support zone. Okay. Uh, Matt, ZB, yeah, ZB is futures for TLT. TLT is also long, has already triggered uh, a long rotation. So ZB as well. Uh, let me just share ZB here. Okay. All right. So ZB, uh, we have, uh, actually, I, I, I like this and I was stocking it. And man, was I ever stocking it? I, I was stocking this since June. And it just broke out. And because it broke out before the market opened, I missed it. Okay. So it sucked because I missed it. But anyways, I was looking for a pullback. And I had to wait here. So I waited two weeks until finally today it triggered. Okay. So we had, this is a textbook pullback with the uh, uh, doji one, two, three, four candles to the trend, 10 EMA. You had an inside bar here. My entry, <clears throat> my entry, by the way, is still 123.19, just above this high to prove that the price can go higher. Because this high is one twenty uh this high is uh yeah, this high is 123.12 here. So we took it at 19 to make sure that, you know, and we're waiting for a continuation higher maybe into the 126, 126 or higher. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing here. So again, this is going to take some time. All the swing trades are called into trading room within these uh, two hours, one hour, two hours. Sometimes, you know, we have trades and we're done at 10 o'clock. I mean, I haven't had that happen in a really long time, but uh, sometimes we get, you know, uh, a really great, uh, market environment, a really great move, and uh, we're done at 10 o'clock. Like I said, the market has been extremely difficult this year, um, and it's it has been, you know, um, very, very, very choppy, thin, flaky, moody. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, hopefully it's going to recover going into next year but be aware the stops are still going to be wide going into tomorrow and in fact this whole entire week expect a roller coaster week because of option expiration is it be a swing afraid to hold overnight no i do swings all the time i'm coming from investing and swing trading background so swing trading is my thing i actually love swing trading more than i do day trading so there will be a time. So if you guys want to learn how to day trade, learn how to day trade, because I don't know how long I'm going to be holding the trading room. I mean, it's going to still be here for a couple of years. But other than that, I'm going to resume all my swing trading activities where I don't have to sit in front of the computer for two hours every day. The PNL all over, PNL all over the, no. Oh, what do you mean? Like, why would it be all over the place? No. And swing? No, no, you put your entry, just like in day trades, you put your entry, you put your stop, you put your targets and you walk away. You don't look at it. You don't look at it. There is no babysitting. <laughs> there is no babysitting. You either have your target achieved or your stop hit. And because of position size, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to risk more than 1% or 2% or whatever. In stocks, I risk 3 to 4%. Sometimes if I, I like a stock a lot, I may risk even 5% or more. So for example, I'm in trades, uh, I'm in NVIDIA, I'm in Broadcom, I'm in Apple. I'm not even using stops on those. Uh, can I show you tomorrow how to play stocks, uh, how, how to place trades? Of course. In fact, we could do that before the market even opens. So I can show you, I could, we could do a drill. 
would that be okay with you guys if I shared that? Jose would like to, um, if there is anybody else. And Jose, don't forget to um, enable everyone so everybody can see their questions. Okay. So how about, how about this, guys? Let's meet tomorrow at 9 o'clock. And from, let's say from 9 o'clock to 9.10, I'll show you how to uh, enter orders how to place stops, how to do this before the trading day even starts. So you start on the right page. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Okay. So first thing, so what I want you guys tomorrow is pull up your simulated accounts. Okay. I don't want anybody on live because it's going to be mock trades before the open. Okay. So we're going to exercise in out okay limit in limit out okay does that make sense Doo -doo -doo. it's gonna be fun if you guys want it i hey i'm here to serve you so you tell me what you need you tell me how i can help you does that make sense and if this is helping you this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow before the market opens and then we're going to do the market game plan and then start trading okay today we made big bucks Jim I'm gonna be sending you the stats for my account we made money all right Sounds good, everybody. Green is nice. Greenville. All right. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Matt. Okay. All right, guys. So this is the wrap. Bottom line. Take a look where NASDAQ is right now. It's a 980. Like I said, it's a matter of how long can you sit in this trade without giving money back? Like I said, watch the video from the beginning if you want. I said it from the get-go. Now it's going to go to 19000 All right. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I hope this was, hey, Douglas, I hope this was educational for me. Okay. I will send you guys an email later on today. Actually, today it's going to be like cray cray for me. I have an event at two o'clock. I have another event at four o'clock. I have another one at six o'clock. So throughout the trading day today, throughout the day today, you're going to receive an email with the recording and also with my stats. Okay. With all the trades that we took and everything else. So that's it, everybody. <laughs> that's great. Phil, I'm really not going for impressions. I'm going for money. <laughs> uh, like, uh, I don't care about what everybody says. Hey, if I make money, I could care less. <laughs> All right. So I'm, <laughs> so thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. My trading time is done. This is what I do. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another session in here. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great one. Bye.